who will drive the Legacy Motor Club number 43 in 2025, plus who fills those two open seats at Front Row Motorsports. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. Yeah, yesterday's video, a little controversial. Let's go ahead and move on to something that's not that controversial. That being, who will drive that Legacy Motor Club number 43 car in 2025? Will it be Heim time? Is Corey Heim going to make the jump from the Truck Series up to the Cup Series? Or will that Jones boy retain the seat over at Legacy Motor Club, the team he's been with since 2021? Well, three iterations of name ago since 2021. For Eric Jones, it makes a lot of sense for Legacy to hold on to him. The guy is a heck of a race car driver. He has a win for this team back when it wasn't Legacy Motor Club. He's been with them through three iterations. He joined them as Richard Petty Motorsports. He was with them as they were Petty GMS. And now he's with them as Legacy Motor Club. He has uh, 27 top 10 finishes for the team since joining in 2021. Four top fives, uh, I believe, and a win in the Southern 500. Eric Jones is a really good race car driver, and he's a veteran presence that they absolutely need at Legacy Motor Club. However, there is a five-star prospect out there that is available, that being Corey Heim. Now, TRD thinks highly of Corey Heim. Heim, to me, is a five-star prospect. He's a can't miss. He's a guy that is going to be a contender in the NASCAR Cup Series for the future for a number of years. The question is, does Legacy Motor Club want to leverage their future on Corey Heim right now? Pair him up with John Hunter Nemechek and just hope for the best. We know it takes about two and a half to three seasons for these rookies to really become acclimated with the Cup Series and become competitive and contending for race wins on a week-in and week-out basis. Heim making the jump straight from the Truck Series up to the Cup Series is a big step, right? Is pulling a Carson Hosovar. And is he ready for that? I think that he definitely is. I think he has the talent to do that. He already made two Cup starts earlier this year with Legacy Motor Club filling in for Eric Jones. He'll also be making an additional Cup Series start this weekend at Nashville for 2311 Racing. And I think Legacy could absolutely be considering him for that ride. At least I've heard that they've been considering him for that right. Eric Jones is a free agent at the end of the year. He does not have anything signed for 2025. I'm just not sure if moving on from that veteran presence for a rookie is worth it at this moment as that team continues to struggle. They just do not have speed week in and week out. They got a great top 10 last week at New Hampshire with John Hunter Nemechek, but a lot of things had to play into their favor for that to happen. They don't have that outright speed as it stands right now. They're definitely the slowest of the Toyota group. So for Heim, like I said, he is the big prospect on the market right now. Every team would like to have Corey Heim in their camp. Whether that be a Ford team, a Chevy team, or a Toyota team, everybody wants him. Other than Joe Gibbs Racing, it does not seem like Corey Heim has anything that is, will ever happen at JGR because he and Ty Gibbs just don't seem to get along. So that's why you haven't seen him in a JGR Xfinity car. You're never going to see him in a JGR Cup Series car either by the sounds of it. He, of course, has made uh, some starts for Sam Hunt Racing in the Xfinity Series this year. Has looked pretty formidable. Obviously, those cars aren't JGR cars. I think if he's in a JGR Xfinity car, he's probably already won at this point. But Corey Heim is definitely a guy that can absolutely have a cup team built around him. The question is, do you want to pair him up with John Hunter Nemechek, or would you rather pair him up with Eric Jones, a veteran who can help sort of guide him along? And I think it's definitely the latter. Unfortunately, the latter's contract is up, and John Hunter Nemechek is in the first year of a contract. So there's going to be a, a you know a decision that has to be made by Legacy Motor Club. If there's not a pros and cons list on a whiteboard in their office, it's definitely in a spreadsheet or a deck somewhere because they definitely want to make a move on it. Like I said, Heim is the biggest prospect on the market right now. Just not sure if right now is the right time to do that. Maybe another year in trucks, maybe another year in Xfinity. Um, and maybe if I was Heim, I would wait it out to see what other you know potential seats open up for him into the future. But Corey Heim to the 43 is a possibility. Right now, I'd probably said it at 70-30 that Eric Jones will go back to that car and Corey Heim has a 30% chance of landing in it. But it definitely has been discussed at this point. Moving on to Front Row Motorsports, they have two seats open for 2025, that being the 34 and the 36 or whatever number they decide to give it. And unlike Legacy Motor Club, they don't necessarily have to make this decision on getting rid of a veteran and putting a rookie in. They kind of have the best of both worlds here. They don't have to leverage their future or take a Nepo baby like they're the Los Angeles Lakers. They can make business decisions here. And Legacy, of course, can re-sign Eric Jones. Don't, don't for a second think that they can't do that. But for Front Row Motorsports, they have two seats open. And Bob Pockers and his uh, story this week, kind of projecting the 2025 Cup Series lineup, laid out four names that he's heard for this seat. Two of them uh, have obviously been the ones that have been discussed. The other two are kind of interesting. 
Two of them that have been discussed so far are obviously two of the current Stuart Haas racing drivers, that being Josh Berry as well as Noah Gragson. The other two interesting names, Sam Mayer and Christian Eck is the truck series driver. So let's start with the cup guys real quick that have been mentioned. You have Noah Gragson. Obviously, he's had a lot of speed this year. And through the first half of 2024, that has looked entirely different than the first half of 2023 that he had. I mean, it is night and day difference. He has five top 10 finishes this year. He's had a lot of speed. And he's going to have some sponsorship money with him with Bass Pro Shops, as well as a few of the smaller auxiliary sponsors that he has. So that's enticing to Front Row Motorsports for sure. Uh, with Noah, it could probably be a pretty seamless transition. Bring Drew Blickensurfer over with them, some of the SHR guys, and he could slot right into one of those seats. It makes a lot of sense if that's where Noah ends up at. Obviously... The, you know, I think he probably maybe had a shot of going to RCR if they were able to secure a third charter. That's not happening now since Gene Haas is keeping that fourth charter for himself and that Haas factory team. So for Noah, this is probably the best landing spot for him. The other driver that was mentioned from that SHR stable is Josh Berry. Now, Josh, uh, like Noah, is kind of basically in his rookie season. Josh is in his rookie season. Noah, you know, had a rookie season, then that got, you know, finished now he's kind of having a second rookie season but josh is truly having a rookie season he has two top five finishes this year four top tens and has looked really fast over the last month he and rodney childers seem to be clicking um together and really figuring out how to make that four car go fast so for him to end up over there that would be really interesting you're getting maturity you're getting potentially rodney childers and you're getting a guy that has really shown a propensity this year to get better as the season's gone on which is you know, not the easiest thing to do in the Cup Series. It's a steep learning curve for sure. For Josh, he doesn't bring as much money as Noah probably does. He does have sponsors with him. Uh, so that might be something that, you know, could hold that deal up. I still think that Josh Berry ends up at the 21 car with the Wood Brothers in 2025. But of course, he's got to keep his options open here. And Wood Brothers or Front Row would be a solid landing spot. The other two names are definitely interesting. We'll start with Sam Mayer. He has won six of the last 30 NASCAR Xfinity Series races, second hottest driver in the series. He's a guy that can absolutely go out there and win. Once he figured out how to win last year, now he just continues to win. He already has two wins this season. And the problem with Sam that I currently see, and I think that he's super talented. He's a guy that can absolutely win races. He needs to figure out that consistency because this year he has eight top tens. That's only half of the season that he's finished in the top 10 in a series where he should absolutely be finishing in the top 10 bar and, you know, getting caught up in somebody else's end and he has had some bad luck for sure don't get me wrong there but for sam he mentioned after his last win that he wants to be in the cup series he doesn't understand why his name isn't mentioned more in the cup series and i you know i think that there's some stigma around sam's name obviously he is a pay driver at the end of the day people don't necessarily view him as a you know race winning driver as the talent they view him more as a pay driver right now and Probably to get into this cup ride at FRM, he's going to have to bring some money along with him. His family writes a check. That's why he's in the car at JRM. But he's a pay driver in a sense that he can absolutely go out there and win races, kind of like William Byron. William Byron was a pay driver, right? He brought sponsorship along with him. And obviously, he's as good as advertised. And Sam probably isn't William Byron level, but he's a guy that can absolutely go out there and win some races for you and be in contention. So if, you know, Bob Jenkins and... Uh, and Jerry Freeze are looking for a guy with some money behind him. Sam is probably that guy, and he's progressively gotten better, right? We've seen him go head-to-head -head with Ty Gibbs in the ARCA series. Uh, it took him a little bit longer in the Xfinity series to get his feet underneath himself and to start winning at a good clip, and he's finally done that now. So Sam, you know, is a guy. He's a formidable race car driver, and if he got one of those seats, I think he could absolutely succeed. He would have to leave that Chevy camp to go over, but I don't think that Chevy is necessarily tied to Sam Mayer the way that they are some of their other prospects. And then... The most interesting name is Christian Eckes. And I think that Christian Eckes might be one of the most underrated prospects right now in NASCAR. He's still young. He has seven truck series wins to his credit. This year, he has shown insane consistency, 11 top 10s and 12 races. All the guy does is consistently run really, really well. And I think there's Corey Heim and there's Christian Eckes. That's the prospect list right now from the truck series. And I think both of those guys are incredibly talented. Eckes reminds me a lot of a Matt Kenseth. He's just going to consistently like point you to death that's what he does he's going to win races but he's going to just always be there in contention 
getting maximum points when the maximum points that his day allows for him for the car that day. The only thing with Eck is that I find interesting is he doesn't bring money with him, not in the same way that like a Sam Mayer does. Uh, obviously, he has Napa on his truck in the truck series with McAnally, but that's always been a McAnally sponsor. So if he were to move up to FRM, is he bringing money with him? Do they have sponsorship over there? I think that might be the only thing that could be a bit of a hold up there. So yeah, let me know in the comments. Who do you think gets that 43 car at Legacy? And who do you think fills those two seats at Front Row Motorsports? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.